Good morning, everyone. Just wanted to do a little quick update on this week's progress. There wasn't a whole lot due to the weather and stuff. One day I went over to a buddy's where my brake is and bent some metal for the flashings. Or one up on the top edge of the batter board there or whatever you want to call it. The drip cap on there. I covered in metal just to prevent any moisture from sitting there. Snow and such forth. And then a subscriber earlier in the series had made a comment about when this stuff shrinks up a little bit more. That the grooves in between may be chase for mice to run up. So from his advice, I went and bent uh, some L-bends that I can stick up behind it and then cover the bottom edge so nothing can get up in between. But the, I gotta tell you, it's been a cold week, so not a whole lot of stuff has been getting done. And uh, I haven't been feeling too good. I seem to have come down with a heck of a chest cold. And this cold air is really irritating it. But, that being said, I'm kind of curious to see if you guys would enjoy a couple of three videos on the cabinets being built for this thing. I'll do them in my garage where I can at least uh, put some heat on and keep the place somewhat warm. And uh, show you how I go about doing that, doing the face frames and the case goods and stuff. Won't be anything extremely fancy, but we'll make her look nice. Uh, because inside here, I would like to find a wood stove and place on this wall a wood cook stove. You know, the old antique ones with the ovens and everything. Because the loft is going to be on this side. And it'll probably come to the, I haven't decided if I want it to the edge of the door, the center of the door, or the that edge of the door. I'm kind of thinking that edge of the door simply for the fact that uh, when I put a folding staircase down it won't be in the way of anything. But I'm not yet sure on that. But I am sure I really want to get a wood stove in here. And like place it along this wall I should be able to put some sort of a sink base because you got to remember this is going to be kind of an off-grid scenario so I'll have to get a little propane on-demand heater for underneath of it and uh, and then uh, a little 12 volt RV pump or something to to uh, actually pump water. That's all down the line though. I've been I've been talking to Carl from Carl's Off Grid, and uh, he's a kind of a plumber by trade, so I'll maybe pump his brain for some ideas on how to do this. So in case anyone's wondering, this is going to be the detail work on that split on the gable ends. And I ripped the first piece that goes on, and that'll be the same thickness as what the siding is. An inch and a half narrower. So that sits on top of my cut edge up on there. And then this one will go over the existing siding an inch and a half. And then we got a rain cap that I got to still put a miter on. We'll do about a five degree miter and then do a rain drip cut on the bottom side 
So that'll act something similar to this. And then our next course of siding will come down Our next course of siding will come down like this. That's the reason why I wanted to bring my big miter saw down there. Because this will have to be beveled at about 5 degree. That goes against the drip cap. And then the top has to have a 45 degree angle. So that's, that's all I'm doing right now. See, if you look under any old wood windows, most of the better ones will have a slot there. I don't know why my uh, camera's not focusing on that. But yeah, so theory is the water runs down off and it always curls back in. That's why we got drip edge on windows. And when it hits this slot, it's supposed to stop and drip off. <clears throat> so I think what I'm going to do is bend a piece of coil stock that comes down the wall over the top of this and maybe put a little kick on the outer edge just so that the water kicks back a hair more. And that'll give me a little protection so this piece of wood doesn't rot out in five years. But yeah, as simple as that, a little drip cap for the, the break in the siding on those gables. So I stopped over at a buddy's garage. That's, I've been letting use my break. He's been working on his garage here for most of the summer. And I figured I'd uh, let him use the break for any of the metal work he had to do on it. But we need it to break the pieces of flashing for the drip cap and then for under the uh, edge of the siding. As one subscriber had made a comment about make sure that we plug it up, we're going to use some brake metal to run along the bottom edge to stop any mice from crawling up or any other bug from crawling up in between the gaps in the siding. sit over the top of the drip cap. These will all sit underneath the edge of the siding so nothing can run up in between the, the uh, pieces of one by.
Well, I don't know guys, it's awful dang cold out here. I may have to start the cabinets up at the shop, up at the garage, try to clean them up. But we'll see. Anyway, that's the gist of it. I got one more layer to put on there and then the drip cap and the metal, and then I can start siding on this side. So anyhow, this is what I've been talking about. We put our first uh, horizontal one by here, and then I use a full one by ten and cover that little gap so the water won't make it in between. The next step will be after I finish this one will be to put a drip cap over and then run that metal over the top of that. I put a drip cap. I put this brake metal as a cover flashing. Just as an extra preventer for any type of water getting up behind it. And when I get to that point, I'll explain why I left that three and a half inch gap. <laughs> 